I'm Amy Farley with Travel and Leisure Magazine at ILTM 2014, talking with Mike Back, founder and chairman of Travel Leaders Group, owner of Zell Travel, Pro Travel, among other big agencies. Thank you for coming on. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. So, Mike, you travel the world, I'm assuming, about 365 days a year, 364 maybe? Close to that. <laughs> Close. Um, what's the most exciting destination you've seen in the last 12 months? Well, I'm really excited about the Middle East right now, and I, let me tell you why. I mean, first of all, there's so much more airline capacity, and it's very high quality capacity uh, to the Middle East yeah. from the U.S., and we're a U.S.-centric company, so this is a complete new market for us. And it's, you know, the, the, the Middle East has so many interesting destinations from places like Abu Dhabi or Oman, or obviously Dubai, because Dubai's made a, a big splash in the world, and then all the points beyond. And because it's offers such good value and it's a relatively uh, good flight for people to take. I, I'm excited. There's a new part of the world that's really opened up to the American market. And what's the biggest trend in luxury travel right now? Well, the trend is always uh, for better and better quality. You know, if, if you, I mean, all that happens is the world keeps getting richer. I mean, if you look about my, you know, my favorite uh, quote on wealth is that when, when, when I left university, which was a long, long time ago, it's 1975, uh, world GDP was 14 trillion. You know, a trillion dollars is a lot of money. Today, world GDP is about 75 trillion. Now, that's a massive explosion in, in, in wealth. And of course, it grows every year by about 3 or 4%. So there's money in the world that we've never seen the likes of before. The growth is, is bigger than we've ever seen before. And everybody wants to go to the best places. So that, for me, the, the biggest trend is, is the... Uh, um, I would say the the uh, availability of new luxury uh, product that that's trying to take care of this incessant demand. So I know that it is very hard because every traveler has an individual profile. But what are the defining qualities in luxury travel right now? Well, consistency is always the the, the, the number one. You, you know, you're, you're nothing unless you have consistency because all people ever remember, it's like a restaurant. One bad meal you're finished, mm -hmm. really. Very few people will forgive you, especially if it's the first time they visited there. They will not forgive you. Yeah. So consistency is always going to be number one. Um, quality with some degree of value as, as well. And, and, and by that, I don't mean to say that people get a deal. or I, What I mean by that is, you know, if you're charging... $75 for a cup of coffee and a ham sandwich, it better be served beautifully. It better be served by wonderful people who are paid well and happy to be there. And, um, you know, that that's the quality that you pay for. And you're actually also paying for exclusivity as well because one of the reasons you're there, rather than in a Starbucks down the road, is that you, know, you, you want to be in an environment where you're not surrounded by, you know, a hundred other people having a ham sandwich. So it's obviously a very exciting time to be in luxury travel right now, but there are also a lot of challenges on the horizon, in particular for your, your side of the business. Are there any things that really um, keep you up at night that worry you? Well, I, the, the, the problem is there's so many things in the world that can go wrong, and the travel industry is the poster child for volatility. Right? So whether or not it's um, you know, an Ebola crisis, or whether or not it's an Asian flu, or whether or not... Uh, terrorism actually now is less less of a problem. The world has become vaccinated to terrorist uh, activity. It's sad um, that we've all had to go through this, but if you go back 30 years and there would be a bomb in London or whatever, then all travel to London would stop. I, I mean, that's no longer the case because people just realize that these are random acts of terror designed to upset everybody. And really, frankly, it's, it's not a problem because we've been vaccinated to it. Um, Pandemics, health pandemics are, are, are a worry. Financial meltdowns are a worry. But, you know, in all honesty, they'll always be there. Um, we've what, always come through them, so it doesn't keep me up at night. What about technology? Is that a friend or a foe? It's a friend. Technology is a friend. And, you know, it just raises the bar for the average uh, travel agent because, you know, we have 40,000 travel agents in our group. And I, and I know when I joined Carlson in 1996 and came into the travel agency business, a lot of people thought I was crazy. And said, you know, what are you, you know, you'll be out of a job in four years. And here we are, you know, we're talking really, you know, 20 years later almost. And our company this year had, you know, we, our top line grew by 12%. Our bottom line grew by 22%. We've had spectacular growth, 5 billion in 2007 to 19 billion today. Um, you, you know, I mean, fr frankly, technology helps us because 
we use technology to be of more use to our customers. And, you know, the world's a big place. There are people that would like to do it themselves and they should do it themselves. And there are people that say, I want an expert and I want somebody that knows what they're doing. And I want somebody that can fix things when they go wrong and somebody that means something to these suppliers because they do so much business with them, they are important and they represent me um, when I need something done. And so technology doesn't frighten us at all. We just use it and we keep growing. So you've been in the travel business for some time. Long time. A long time. And ILT is very good at nurturing new talent, um, helping out rising stars. What's the most important piece of career advice you received early on and um, could you pass that on? The one thing I was told was show up and be on time. I've always struggled with on time, <laughs> um, but I've always showed up. And the one thing I would add to that is treat everyone as an equal. Never look up or down at anybody. Um, today's doorman is tomorrow's CEO. You, you, you don't know. And actually, it doesn't matter what the person's going to be tomorrow. But the, the fact is, as you go through life and you meet people, everybody's important. Return every call. You know, be polite with everybody. Treat, treat everybody like they're going to be your boss tomorrow. Um, and realize that when you get older, like, like I am now, that all you have is your reputation. When, and you can't, you can't remake it. You know, once mm. you get past probably 30 years old, your reputation's kind of set. So remember, you know, what you do matters. And uh, when, when you go through life, when, when you get to a certain age, it's all about reputation. And that, that will actually... Um, that will determine how you'll end your career, your mm. reputation. So where are you going next for leisure? Probably it will, it will be um, uh, south of France or the Italian coast, uh, yeah, either in a gorgeous hotel or a, or a lovely villa. Not sure yet, but um, something unique looking at Blue Sea and uh, with lovely restaurants and a golf course nearby. Sounds perfect. Yeah. Mike, thank you so much for stopping by to talk to me. I thank really you. appreciate it. It's a pleasure. <laughs>